Hello again. Today we're going to take a look at Strategy and Tactics issue 124 from December of 1988. Fortress Stalingrad, the Soviet Winter Counteroffensive 1942 to 1943. Um, if you pick this game up, you'll get uh, issue 124 of Strategy and Tactics with the game inside and an article on the Stalingrad campaign. You'll get a sheet of counters, uh, mine are punched, but you'll get a complete unpunched sheet of counters if you buy this in mint condition, and you'll get a map. Inside the rules are various charts and tables. We'll take a look at the components now. We'll start with the rules booklet. The rules are printed in black and white. I believe they're double column. Nope, they're triple column. Uh, let's see, we have Fortress Stalingrad, the Soviet Winter Counteroffensive, 1942-43. Game credits, the design is by Ty Bomba. Development is by Jay Shamas and Christopher Perello. Playtesters, Andrew Larson, George Sherrod, Sherrod, Elmer Berger, Raymond Bagley, Rick Zapata, and Baron Olson. Map credits is by Roger McGowan Graphics and Design Studios. The director was Roger McGowan. Counter and Rules Production by Larry Hoffman. The rules are 19 pages in length. We have the table of contents below, which gives us credits and introduction, game components, setup and hex control, turn sequence, zones of control, stacking, supply, air power, reinforcements and replacements, um, movement, terrain, and mobile assaults, prepared assaults and combat results, other special units, first turn special rules, the Fuhrer mandated counteroffensive, victory conditions, designer's notes, and player's notes. And then we have a brief introduction of the game. Fortress Stalingrad is a strategic operational simulation of the single most important campaign of World War II in Europe. Um, Two-player game. Um, the map. Let's see. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Game components. 200 die-cut counters. Your units. Let's take a look at the units real quick. Sample unit. Tell from the graphic, you got the turn of entry, its strength steps, attack factor, defense factor, and movement factor, its unit size, historic ID, and the type of unit. Most of the units in the game are core for the Germans and armies for the Soviets. Here we have a graphic of uh, that you'll find on some of the counters. Um, tank silhouettes and vehicle silhouettes for uh, mechanized and motorized and armored tank formations and then we have standard NATO symbols for non-motorized units. Let's see, we have the setup and hex control, let me zoom back a little bit. Uh, and the abbreviations on the units. Turn sequence. Let's look at that real quick. All actions taken during a game turn of Fortress Stalingrad take place within the framework. Uh, let's see. Framework of two player turns, each of which is subdivided into smaller segments called phases. Actions taken out of sequence are illegal, and once a player completes a phase and has gone on to the next, he may not go back to perform some forgotten action without his opponent's permission. What do we have first? We have I, initial and mutual supply phase. You'll check the supply status of all units on both sides. Conditions determined here last throughout the entire game turn. We have two air power phase, first the German, then the Soviet. Place one air unit atop any friendly unit. For a German unit to receive air support, there must be a German controlled town or city within 10 hexes. For Soviets, there must be a frontal supply unit within 10 hexes. Then, step three, um, 
We have the Soviet player turn, which has a reinforcement and replacement phase, a movement, where he may conduct a, any mobile assaults. C, prepared assault phase. And let's see, place the Stavka Katusha counters, calculate combat odds and resolve battles one at a time. Then we have four, German player turn. He has a reinforcement replacement phase, movement and mobile assault phase, and a prepared assault phase. Then we have the terminal and mutual supply phase, where you remove from play all Soviet units bearing a number grade, three or greater. Attenuated supply counters that have no complete supply line of any length at this time will also uh, remove, I guess. And then we have some other things. Uh, remove Axis satellite units. Remove all German units which have greater than three out of supply. Remove uh, marker on them. Remove all German units in or next to a friendly controlled city bearing an out of uh, six out of supply counter. Then we have zones of control. Projected into every type of hex. Units entering a hex containing enemy zone of control must immediately cease movement. It may move no farther. And let's see what else we have. Let's see if I can keep any of this in frame here. We'll just do the standard blah blah blah. We have stacking rules. Uh, what does it say? Two units may be stacked in the same hex. We have supply rules, number seven. To be in supply and thus operate with full power, Soviet combat units must trace their supply line to the 001 frontal supply units. Uh, Germans, Axis. I'm not seeing them, they must be a little bit farther down the road. So we must do it. Not sure. I know they have to be about 10 hexes away from their uh, supply line. I'm just not seeing the details on it at the moment. Anyway, there are several rules on supply. Actually, there's about four pages of uh, rules on supply. Then we come to air power. During the air power phase of each game turn, both players must commit all their available tactical air support counters to particular units or stacks. Uh, let's see. Reinforcements and replacements. Both sides receive new units as reinforcements as specified on the turn record track. Uh, replenishment of weakened units already on the board or in the dead piles accomplished using replacement steps. Reinforcements are received before replacements are taken. And we have another page or so of uh, replacements and reinforcements. Then it looks like we have Soviet units holding box and setup chart. Uh, and I think we'll have the Axis one as well, or German. German units holding box and set up. Then we have special events table and the combat results table. Combat results go from 1 to 3 up to 8 to 1 plus. Results look like step losses to me for both the attacker and the defender, but I'd have to read the actual combat results uh, section to be sure. We have special events table based on the turn and the date. We have a counter manifest in case you lose a piece. You can craft your own or and or determine how many pieces you're supposed to have in the game. Mine came used and I have not yet gone through the counters to verify that there are 200, but perhaps someday down the road. Then finally, by uh, section 10, we get to movement, terrain, and mobile assaults. Every unit, every ground unit in the game has a movement factor printed on the rightmost. Is eh. 
as the rightmost numeral along its bottom edge represents the maximum number of hexes the unit may move into a, in a two in a single movement phase. Standard rule there. Prepared combat. Uh, prepared assaults and combat results. Look at the combat results table, look across the top line to find the odds, so it's odds base corresponding to the odds ratio of the battle you just figured. Roll the die, find the result under your odds column heading. Let's see. Their odds charge results. <clears throat> are read as step losses or hexes retreated or any combination thereof. So that's how that works. Mm, wait a minute. This looks interesting. <laughs> we'll uh, check out number uh, 1114, TOAST. This is an acronym meaning Tactically Overwhelmed Axis Satellite Troops. Yes, they can be toast. Then we have other special units. The Soviet 28th Army. The 030 uh, Garrisons. And the Soviet 62nd Army. Then the first turn special rules. The Fuhrer Mandated Offensive. And then we have Victory Conditions. The game is won on points, and only the Soviet player accumulates victory points. And who wins depends upon how many of those points um, he's accumulated. Every town on the map that has no number is next to it is worth one victory point. Other towns and cities have the victory point uh, number printed next to them. Uh, if at the end of game turn 12, there's a Soviet combat unit anywhere in the Crimea Peninsula, no matter what his supply state, the Soviets awarded 20 victory points. Different towns. I'm not going to try and pronounce the Russian words or names uh, with any degree of accuracy. But Kharkov, Kursk, Mykop, Dnipropetrovsk. They're all worth uh, multiple points. Novorossik, Rostov, Stalingrad, worth 20 points. Stalino, Voronezh, Zaparaz, uh, however you pronounce it. Anyway, each uh, Axis satellite point destroyed is one, two points for a German. And anyway, we come on down to at the end of the game, if the Soviet has 111 or more victory points, he wins. If the total is from 100 to 110, the game's a draw. If it's less than 100, the German wins. Then we have designer notes. About a page of those. And then we have player notes. And that rounds out the game rules for uh, uh, Fortress Stalingrad. Some design notes. Optional rules if you wish to employ them. And that's about it for the rules. Next we will look at the counters real quick. Pretty much got a glimpse of them in the rule book, but we'll just show you the actual physical counters themselves, some of them. Okay, we'll just take a real brief look at some of the game counters. They are half inch in size and they are glossy coated. The uh, information found on them once again is their turn of entry. I'm guessing the dot means they start on the board. Their number of steps. The Soviet Army uh, tank unit has four and like the German uh, tank corps has two steps. This would be an SS unit obviously. Uh, with four steps. I'm assuming it starts on the board. Uh, we have attack factors. First number, second number is the defense factor, and the final number is the movement allowance. Silhouette or symbol indicates what type of unit it is. This is infantry, this is armor, tank, mechanized. 
uh, Panzer. This unit has been flipped over from its front side to its back side. Starts with an initial strength of 13 and 17 defense and 5 movement. We flip it over due to a combat result of some sort. Now becomes a 10, 13, 5. The number over here is its uh, historic unit ID. And uh, like I say, most Soviet units are in armies. Most uh, German units are in corps. And this is just an example air unit. Uh, Russian. Some various types of units are German Army and Air Force, Elite Nazi SS, Hungarians, Italians, Romanians. On the Soviet side we have the Red Army and the Elite Guards. So that is just a basic uh, understanding and look at the counters. Next we'll look at the map. Taking a brief look at the map, the map is printed on a matte paper, I'd say medium weight, maybe a little less. Each hex on the map equals approximately 25 kilometers or 15 miles from side to opposite side, and each game turn equals one third of a month. Terrain and cities on the map have been altered slightly from their exact real-world configurations to fit within the hex grid, but the relationships between the terrain from hex to hex are accurate to the degree necessary for, for, prevent, ugh, for presenting players with those same space-time dilemmas faced by their historic counterparts in the actual campaign. And there's only one scenario, and it's 10, uh, 12 turns long. The game is considered intermediate, and it should take around six hours for experienced players. All right, well, back to the map anyway. Uh, it stretches in the north from the Nepro Petrovsk and Zaporoz. I'm not sure how that word is pronounced. I'd really like to know. Zaporoza in the north, down to Stalingrad in the south. This is in relationship to the map. It uh, not necessarily in relationship to real world north, south, east, west. Looking at the map, that would be uh, Stalingrad in the east, obviously, and the Neprovisk uh, in the west. And it stretches from north on the actual on the actual uh, geographical axis uh, from. Moranes, Moranes, uh, to in the south or the west edge of the map. Uh, let's see, what do we got? We got my Maykop, Novorossiysk, the Kerch Straits, and Krasnodar. Now, some of the cities are very, very hard to read. They decided they'd put them in a yellow... Uh, print them in yellow, I believe, some of the major cities. But let's, uh, let's look at this real quick. This terrain... Well, this terrain is clear. This terrain is rough, or broken, I'm sorry. Woods. Marsh. We're probably going to find marsh here, near the Kerch Straits. Marsh hexes. Uh, let's see, Desert Step. That's going to be way down here. This is Desert Step. Oh, oops, if I get into the camera. Desert Step. And then, of course, we have mountains, which we will find. What is that? Mountain, mountain woods. Sorry. I think. Oh, there they are. Helps if I just pay attention. Mountains. Then we have minor, major rivers, towns, railroad. Towns, like I said, are uh, almost impossible to uh, read or see. 
for this city here. Well, where's my camera at? For this city here, there is a town here, but it's in yellow. Sorry. On a yellow map. I'll look at this one, I guess. It's a little bit closer. Down here below this river. There it is. It's hard to look at the viewfinder and the map at the same time. This is considered to be a town. And as you can tell, very hard to see the little uh, graphic on there for a town. Cities, they're, but they're a bit easier. Look at Stalingrad here real quickly. But the city, it's fairly easy to see it. And then we have other things like uh, entrenchments, entrenchments, uh, must be a Soviet entrenchment, no, I'm not sure what that is, what is it saying it is? It says entrenchments for both those symbols, so I don't think that's quite right, but anyway, then we had the Kerch Straits and the weather line. The weather line is over here. dashed line here and let's see what else we have on the map we have zoom out again combat results table the aforementioned uh, train effects chart we have Soviet victory points track and then finally, we have the uh, game turn record track. And that is pretty much it, boys and girls, for Fortress Stalingrad from S&T 124. Um, haven't played the game, haven't owned it that long. Bought it used uh, off of some online retailer. And um, that's basically a look at the game. In case anybody is interested in picking it up or adding it to their collection. Boy, seem to be, uh, well, the light and the camera don't uh, agree with each other. Anyway, that's a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and post this up and I'll try to find some other uh, old ancient game to show you um, in the next couple weeks. Um, those of you who celebrate it, Happy Thanksgiving. And we will talk to you after the Thanksgiving holiday. Take care. Stay safe.